where are you right now? I am hanging out with my boo tree friend, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I call, um, it's my nickname for this ginormous uh, sugar maple. I'm not sure how old she is, but definitely in the couple hundred, her um, trunk is enormous. And if I look in the woods to my left, I can actually see like the very old remnants of um, the sheepfold that she was at the corner of before the rest of the woods kind of grew up around her. So I am hanging out on um, her nice dry roots because everywhere else is covered in snow, but she's dense enough that there's no snow under her. <laughs> and um, I'm actually sitting right next to her maple sugar buckets because it's maple sugar time. She's got two nice big buckets. So there's a little plank here and there. How did you find her in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> so um, she is actually, it's kind of like one of like the designated like sit spots at the sanctuary um, that I come to all the time. There's like a, a little ring of benches around her. But um, the trail is kind of funny because to get to her, you come to a fork uh, and one side of the fork kind of continues very naturally in front of you and it's like mulched. It's very, very clear. The other side of the fork um, goes down a pretty sharp downhill and is very, very muddy. Um, and you can kind of see from where you're standing at the top, there's like a creek. So when people are unfamiliar with the sanctuary, they just don't go down that way. Like it doesn't even occur to people that that's a trail unless you like really pay attention to the map. So I started wandering down and then found that she was like a cheat code that if I like wanted to come on a busy day, there would be no one here. Um, and I've been coming to the sanctuary for, oh my God, almost 25 years now since I was seven, wow. which is an insane number. But yeah, I started like hanging out with tree friend on the regular, like in my twenties, I want to say I just started, there was one morning where I came and there were a ton of deer here and they didn't leave when I sat down and I was like, this is the place. It's where it's happening. How often do you visit her these days? Um, well, now that I live near her, I see her probably two or three times a week, at least once a week. Um, before I moved up here, I came to visit her like at least once a month. Um, and once we move again, it might be that again, but we'll see. I might, I'm, I'm too used to my like weekly forays now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I see, I see quite a lot of her. How long do you visit for? Like how, how much time in the day do you get out there? Yeah. So it kind of varies with like what else I want to do. Cause sometimes, uh, so she's like in this like stand of woods on this, um, it's a glacial formation called a drumlin. Mm. So it's basically like a little hill and the glacier is kind of scraped out around it um, where the marsh is. So it's almost this like island of forest in the middle of the wetland. Mm. And if I leave from Tree Friend, there's a few different just like really great boardwalks that I can actually see right now because because it's winter time and nothing's grown in. So sometimes I'll swing by for like five minutes and just kind of like say hello um usually on days when I have longer so then I'll do like a walk through the sanctuary maybe like go elsewhere some days I come with the express goal of like I'm just gonna hang out with tree friend for like an hour sometimes it accidentally turns into three like mm -hmm. <laughs> depending like sometimes I'll even take a project I'm stuck on down here and just kind of sit um because it's so reliably quiet um so yeah, it really just varies. I always stop by for at least a few minutes because um, I've actually started leaving like my, uh, I have a shrine at home um, where I leave offerings for ancestors, but I also always leave like some bird seeds and some nuts and fruits for for animal spirits. And then I usually uh, will always stop by her to kind of leave uh, the last week of offerings before I put some fresh ones back. So yeah, it varies. When you say that you bring a project that you're working on to the tree, what do you mean? What do you, what do you yeah. bring? What do you do that with, with that project? It's always personal, like personal projects, like usually like divination things or like if, a, if I want to work on a story, I'll usually 
kind of bring it here. Um, sometimes I just sit quiet. Sometimes I literally sit and lean on her and like tell her about it. And she'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you're a person, whatever. But um, that usually helps me kind of work, you know, work ideas out. Um, I want to say the last thing that I actually worked on with her, I was doing like a group uh, guided uh, meditation that I was facilitating. And I was just like, I was super, super stuck. Um, and I brought that down and just like sat with her and like banged it out. Um, so it's, it's usually kind of like very visiony, brainstormy, brain dumpy type of stuff. I'm not usually doing like ticky tacky, like bring a whole bunch of like editing work or something down. But when I'm in like the raw stages of stuff, I like to bring it here. How does tree friend help? with that work I don't know that she even necessarily helps like directly uh -huh. I think it's just good sometimes to be uh when I'm out here with like persons who aren't human it's a little bit easier to to get out of like my stupid headspace and get a little bit more in mm -hmm. my body space because it's like okay we're we're all out here like being people together and like doing what our people thing is and for human people, I feel like that's fundamentally like pretty creative. So it just helps me detach. But for some things like the like guided meditations, I will kind of talk them out to her a little bit. Uh, and she'll give me kind of like images, um, things like that. So it's kind of like a like a parallel play type of thing uh -huh. more than like, you know, bringing her specifics. Um, yeah, because it just facilitates a good a good space. <laughs> Tell me about what a person is mm. yeah so a person like if I if I had to like define it in like words that come out of my mouth versus <laughs> like a squishy like form of light um <laughs> <laughs> it's a discreet kind of individual who has agency and I don't think a person a person doesn't necessarily need to be corporeal like we would consider you know individual animal spirits a person um they don't have a body but they're still agential um yeah I think discrete beings is what I would would kind of drill it down to and and that can certainly be mushy because so I'm sitting at tree friend I'm looking at the the big old man oak who's like right across from her um and then this kind of whole section of woods is uh a lot of like new growth of, of beach um some pine trees but they're you know all connected underneath so discreet is like kind of a squishy word sure. um but yeah like kind of where you can like where a venn diagram has less overlap mm -hmm. <laughs> that non-overlapping space i think is where the person is does that make sense? Yes, it does. It, ma <laughs> it makes sense in the sense of the phrase makes sense that I think is actually more true than the one that people usually mean, which is like computes logically, which of course has nothing to do with senses at all. Right. <laughs> right. And, and that actually is kind of what I want to ask more about. I, I don't, I don't expect that everyone listening to this has a space in their sort of experience, their past empirical experience for a uh, understanding of people that is so expansive and that particularly that goes beyond human beings. And mm -hmm. I want to know about your history of meeting non-human people and how you met them and where and just sort of what you noticed that uh, that made you that, that that has allowed you to become familiar with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's interesting is there definitely I wouldn't say there's any like a particular catalyzing event to it, right? Um, it was definitely just sort of a gradual, um, kind of just a gradual 
understanding I've come to, especially over time of visiting the same places over and over on purpose. Um, I love nature. I love, obviously I love wilderness. I love to be outside. Um, but I actually have very few places that I go to because it is really important to me to kind of connect and get to know kind of what happens um, in an individual space. Um, sorry, there's some new humans no, coming that's, up that's, that's <laughs> behind me here. here. Uh, but um, I would say about probably eight or nine years ago at this point, um, I was living in an apartment that was uh, just two blocks away from um, a brook and a cemetery. Um, and that uh, apartment was extremely spiritually active. Uh -huh. There was so much going on there all the time. And it just like kind of forced me to be like, okay, there are other individuals here with express preferences. Uh -huh. um, I think it's the preferences that really got to me. Um, there was one day, actually that's coming to mind now as I'm talking, <laughs> where um, I was blending up a milkshake with this like really old loud blender um, mm -hmm. and I was positive that my husband my boyfriend at the time had like stomped up to me and I turned to tell him sorry like I was going to be done in a second <laughs> and like he wasn't there um, and I realized like it was the house being like oh my god that's so fucking loud like what are you <laughs> doing I don't want to listen to it. Um, and after that, like instance in particular, I, I think it was just like, oh, okay, like we're, <laughs> we're just always interacting with other folks. And if those other folks know that you're open to it, they're going to tell you what they think about it. Um, and so just being in that environment, I think, and coming here over time, um, and even getting to know, like, recognizable individuals, like there's actually a woodpecker here that, um, He's at least three years old, um, and I know he's the same individual who I see um, every so often when I come. Like, it just, it's hard to think of them as anything other than people. They're just doing their thing, right. and it's so just a part of, of what's around them. It sounds like people and place are sort of entangled and maybe impossible to extract from one another. Yes, and something, something that, something that I, uh, I want to say, uh, without naming the location is that it happens to be the case that all that my most real physical encounters with non corporeal people also took place in the same state that you're in right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, there's something something kind of obvious about it. There's a lot of like places there where people will say that this is a haunted place or that it's full of the spirits of, you know, bygone times or 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 you know, like terrible tragedies that happened or whatever it is. And and, and I I I want to know what connection you feel like history might have to. The, to like the presence of spirits or uh, like pla place and history. Like, like it, it seems, it seems like, in other words, it doesn't seem like you're just hanging out with a tree just because it's a tree. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's like yeah. this whole network of things of times and places and experiences. And like, what is, what is the, the story there? Do you think like, how do, how do, how do spirits come into contact with us? in the time that we're in from wherever they're coming from. Yeah, that's very interesting. I would definitely say like there's a sense of this area being used to human people or I don't know if I even want to say used to human people, but just the way human people have impacted this particular area. Um, so hard uh, over, you know, really since, mm. yeah, because I want to back up because like, obviously, you know, North America has been populated for millennia, but when it comes to people and like the flavor of people in, in our day and age um, and, you know, colonization, especially obviously, 
this area has been so impacted for so long by that, that I think spirits and people have spirit spirit people <laughs> and in even the the animals and the, and the corporeal people trees just have like a way of interacting with us here that would be different from something that's like undisturbed or old growth um mm. it's it's like a different kind of of wild because i would describe like this place where i am now as wilderness to an extent but it it is very um uh, stewarded, I don't know, is the word that I necessarily want to use. It is well cared for, but it's hemmed in, I think, mm -hmm. is what I want to go with. So so human people behavior up here is just so present to these kind of spirits all the time. And then when you add that layer of history and tragedy that's happened here and kind of what that might awaken or affect because it's not just humans human people that are traumatized by that behavior so all of that i think really comes to to intersect and affect how all these different personality that's that's the word that wow. i've been like dancing around like it affects the personality of all these people here because their personality has been built by the way that they interface with humans versus a place that has had the chance to either be totally wild without humans or be totally wild with humans who are truly, you know, part of that, that landscape and indigenous to that landscape. Mm. It's the way that we inform each other and like the other people in this area, the other non-human people, I should specify for clarity, have had to be impacted by us. When you think about this being like the first coast that like the British hit <laughs> mm -hmm. is what I really think about. There, there's some connection I'm feeling between individuation, which is one of the things you use to sort of define person very early, like a discreteness mm -hmm. of a being, and this idea of disturbance that you've just raised. It's like mm -hmm. you throw a rock in the water and then the, like, the circles of that ripple like sort of emerge as like this discrete like form that then just recede back into the water. And I'm, I'm thinking about how undisturbed wilderness, which you brought up might, might be more like the water that has settled back into its waves, right. Rather than having mm -hmm. ripples across the surface. Yeah. And, and I think there's a key too that I want to like acknowledge with undisturbed is the fact that like humans are part of nature, yeah. but they get nature gets disturbed by humans who don't know how to to be part of it and uh -huh. you know specifically that kind of puritanical strain that wants to sort of like enact dominion versus be participatory in yeah are you still there ash yes i oh, am okay, sorry cool. I, <laughs> I literally just got super distracted because there is like this cute lump of snow and i, I picked it up and i squished it and i threw it um <laughs> and forgot I was on the phone for a second. <laughs> Sorry. 